Hey folks, it is Napalm Dawn here, back with another Beta 6 video for Marvel Avengers Alliance Redux. And I'm using Beta 6 to go ahead and prep you guys and talk to you about handling the content in Beta 6 when it drops, hopefully in the relatively new future. At this point, I still do not have any uh, estimates on the date when beta six will drop could be days could be a few short weeks could be somewhere in march could be somewhere in early april i don't unfortunately know that yet but what i can tell you guys is some tips for preparing to slice your way through the beta beta six content and avoid making some of the mistakes that i made when dealing with what is available uh, in beta 6. So 5.6, 5.5, they are not available to the public. They are internal tester builds only. 5.2, which have been in the links in my descriptions of the videos lately, uh, 5.2 is the most recent available version for the public. There have been a lot of refinements in 5.5 and 5.6 that will appear in beta 6, things like tool tips, uh, the ability to do a collect all on the jets that does that collects them all and doesn't immediately uh, resend the jets. It's just like a collect all. And of course, you're going to have uh, many spec ops available to you and actually many PVP seasons or as we are calling it now, PVAI seasons. So I want to go through real quick with you guys what happens to the general release characters that came out during Marvel Avengers Alliance during season one and how you earn them within Redux beta six when it drops. When beta six drops, of course, you're still going to have your PV AI season characters like Deadpool and Psylocke and Cable. All of them are still going to be tied to completing a specific PVP season or PV AI. Unlike the Spec Ops, even though all of the seasons are evergreen for PVAI, you have to do them in a linear fashion. You have to complete Season 1 in order to move on to Season 2. So that means if you are going and are attempting to recruit somebody like Punisher and Cable and Psylocke, you will have had to have had and will have had to have earned Deadpool first because as you know he is the first season so the general release characters are generally scattered around the higher chapters of season one where you typically can get them unlocked is somewhere around mission four or five in a given later chapter like this mystique one or this electra one this is where you can start unlocking the general release characters. And we'll go over that in just a moment. Um, so all you need to do is go through them and get one star. You will come back to your team list and somebody who will have previously said locked like Rogue or Gambit will now have a CP cost there and moved out of the locked category of your characters. And they'll move to somewhere like here, like near... Uh, Captain Marvel, Captain America, Black Hat, etc. Where I say mistakes were made by me is I was so excited to do the Spec Ops, I sort of overlooked the fact that in these Spec Ops you have epic bosses and you have to have certain heroes available to you to do deploys on the epic boss missions in order to go ahead and complete one of the later tasks of all these spec ops and then actually get the hero now this is not true obviously of spec ops one spec ops one is simply getting five stars in each mission over here so getting 15 stars and then you unlock mockingbird there is no other special thing for spec ops one so you actually can dip into spec ops one relatively quickly i would recommend your Black Widow be fully kitted out at that point. You have a good healer available to you like Doctor Strange 
And I would say avoid even getting into the first spec ops until maybe level 30 or so. Um, we tried to do that on this more clean save during the streaming that I've been doing over the last couple months. And we did find out we were successful in the upper 20s and the low 30s. Also, the inventory in combat will be available to you. So you will be able to uh, equip yourself with some supplies like the Crippler is phenomenal. The Chaotic Grenade is pretty good. The Immobilizer stuns everybody. Uh, you'll have good healing items available to you like the expensive elixirs, the restoration packs, the serums are very good and they're pretty cheap. The combat packs, the one that look like they're in uh, lock boxes instead of uh, suitcases and everything. So that of course will be a big boon to you when you're doing like Infiltrator Black Widow against uh, Scrapper uh, Big Head Tommy Gun Guy over there and uh, that is some of the hardest challenges here in spec ops one when you are uh fighting him and you have a class on your side that is of course the exact opposite and that's not going to work out so for spec ops 2 you will have needed to have recruited phoenix scarlet witch and colossus Colossus and Phoenix are, of course, standard unlocks, so that's pretty easy. And then Scarlet Witch is the first character you will need in order to complete a Spec Ops that comes as a general release. Black Panther, Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver are all general releases. Rogue, Gambit. Hercules all come from through the general release content. Beast, Tigra, Captain Britain, Wasp, Black Knight, Union Jack, and Thundra. These are the characters that are available to you simply by doing the story content. All the others that I've skipped over here are either Spec Ops characters, Lockbox characters, or PVAI season characters. So like Vision, he's a Spec Ops. Uh, Omega Sentinel is uh, a Spec Ops. Pym is a Spec Ops. Of course, we know Magneto is a Lockbox. Havoc is a Spec Ops. Cable is a PVP. So there you go. And um, as I said, PvP or PvAI will be linear. So you want to make sure that even though maybe you can do Season 1 and recruit Deadpool by the time you're 30 or 35 in your agent level, when you start going into the later PvAI seasons, there'll be a more robust layout of heroes and the agent will be better equipped because it was later in the original timeline of the game. So season one, you know, you're probably going to see, uh, you know, a lot of katanas, needle guns, and, uh, you know, maybe uh, El Diablo, uh, you know, uh, some machine guns for AOE, things like that. And then as you get further and further along, you're going to see people being equipped with better and better gear. So... You're probably not going to do all the PvAI seasons particularly early because you're going to start going against people that may definitely uh, outclass you. So, Spec Ops 2, in order to get Emma Frost, you'll need Phoenix, Scarlet Witch, Colossus. Moving on to Spec Ops 3, who you're going to need for the Avengers side is Black Panther, and then the X-Men side is going to be Gambit, Rogue, and Nightcrawler. So you will need them in order to recruit magic. Now, just seeing the gear over here reminds me that even if you go into a Spec Ops with the intent to not recruit the hero because you know you don't have the ones available for it yet, you can go into a Spec Ops to at least get the gear there that you happen to really like. If you're a fan of big one-shot agent weapons that have a lot of potential to just take somebody out at the beginning of combat, 
you've got the Phoenix Flare over here. You've got the Roar of the North in the Valkyrie Spec Ops. Here in the Ghost Rider one, you can grab the Hot Shot and combine it with the Signpost. Good AoE stuns and everything. So, yes, you are totally capable of going into a Spec Ops, getting a certain amount of gear, and then... Excuse me, had a yawn there. Uh, you can go into a Spec Ops, get the gear you want, dip out, and then go to a different one. The only consequence you will suffer is that the task list over here will start getting really, really choked up uh, with tasks. And if you're somebody like me who, say, you know, plays World of Warcraft and has a quest list on the side and you like to maybe keep it as trim or as uh, lean as possible, then, uh, then you might wind up having some issues because then your task list is really, really going to start scrolling. Uh, you know, here we did a little bit of the Mockingbird spec ops. I had no intent to recruit her, so I'm, you know, stuck with this Mockingbird task. So, you know, just a heads up on that. So for spec ops four, the Ghost Rider spec ops, you are going to need Quicksilver, Gambit, Hercules, and Daredevil. Of course, Daredevil is a, uh, a starter unlock, but then Quicksilver... Gambit and Hercules are all story unlocks. Moving on to five, you're going to have Beast, Kitty Pride, Storm, and Wolverine. So this one is pretty light on the unlockables. The only one you're going to need to unlock for this one is Beast. The rest of these can be done with um, default or, you know, original unlocks over here. Not too bad. So that could mean that one of the first characters you recruit is Valkyrie, as it only requires one unlock. However, because you have to go through the story in a linear fashion, and say there was a unlock that was uh, tied to Season 1, Chapter 9, Mission 4, let's say somebody unlocks over here, you will have unlocked everybody else along the way when you get to this point so if gambit and rogue were say unlockable here somewhere in chapter seven and now you just recruited somebody in nine uh there there's no real way you are going to miss somebody except if somebody unlocks due to a mega task so what i call a mega task is something like one of these where you have the three requirements for the task Recruit 15 heroes, I've got that. Get a one-star mastery in 8-5, got that. Get 105 stars. I only have 68 on this save. I have another one that is um, 85, so this one's closer. So clearly, if I can do the 105 task, I've done the 85 task. Just want to give you a heads up, but we'll talk about the star masteries in a little bit. So for Spec Ops 6, the Havoc one, which has, as you know, uh, some reasonable cosmic gear in that Spec Ops, you will need Nightcrawler, Phoenix, Deadpool, Tigra, and Beast. So now this is the first Spec Ops where you need to have recruited a PVAI hero in order to go through it. So you will not be able to finish Spec Ops 6 until you're capable of beating PVAI season number one and thereby recruiting Deadpool. Moving on to seven, you're going to have Spider Man, Cable, and Wasp are needed here. Uh, Wasp is a general unlock, but Cable is a PVAI unlock and he is season two. So now you can see the trend here. Things are starting to build. Eventually, the spec ops are going to require Deadpool, Cable, Psylocke. Punisher, X-23, and Phantom X to be on your roster in order to have completed them. Number eight, the Vision of the Future Spec Ops, in which you can get Vision and some kind of okay gear. I think Das Boot um, is in here somewhere. The Or not Das Boot, the, uh, the metal boot that makes you immune to bleeding and everything like that. Uh, eight requires Psylocke, Black Knight, and Captain Britain. So two general releases and one PVAI release 
no standard unlock characters in that one. Nine is Punisher, War Machine, and Union Jack. This is the one that my other save is working on right now, but I don't have Union Jack and I don't have Punisher because there are no PVAI seasons in this beta, so I cannot recruit Rescue yet. Moving on to 10, you need Black Cat, who is a starter unlock, and then Thundra and X-23, another PvP one there in X-23, general release in Thundra. And then finally in Spec Ops 11, you will need Scarlet Witch, Iron Fist, and Phantom X. So uh, you can see the cutoff there is Phantom X. So if you can make it through season six of PVAI and you recruit Phantom X, you will have all of the PVP heroes you need to do the epic bosses. And if you have, and the other save is a little bit better for this, but I can still show it off here. If you have Black Panther, Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, Rogue, Gambit, Hercules, all unlocked, Beast, Tigra comes into play, and Black Knight, and Union Jack, and Captain Britain, then you are good to go. None of the lockbox heroes are required for anything, so that's good. You just need the PVAI heroes and the story heroes. Again, as I said, you can dip into a spec ops, get some gear that you want, get out of it, and then use the gear to go through the story mission content at a easier pace. To be honest, uh, you know, a relatively low level agent, somebody maybe 35 to 40, running around with a signpost and a hotshot is definitely going to kill, uh, you know, maybe chapters one through five or six, um, stunning everything along along the way. Um, that would be a really good combo. So if you wanted to get yourself into the Ghost Rider spec ops and go far enough to get those two pieces of gear, you know, you're going to be sitting pretty for a bunch of this stuff. And then, uh, you know, here everything is open, whether I've done it or not, that's because of the cheat mode. But in beta six with no cheats, everything will be linear. You do need to get, get at least one star of mastery in a mission before you can proceed to the next one and the premium missions uh, don't have those requirements you just need to have the hero available in order to get into them so you will not be able to do this destroyer one unless you had Thor and like way back over here you can't do the abomination one unless you have Hulk now here is how the math works out 177 stars of mastery is what is needed to fulfill the final and biggest mega task. How do you get 177 stars? Well, here is how the stats work out for this. There are 360 stars available in season one. That's 12 chapters of six missions each. Each mission has five stars. So as you can tell, you're getting 30 per chapter. And then there's 12 chapters. There's your 360. Knowing that 177 is the biggest task, the easiest way to at least get the 177, the easiest and potentially the fastest, is five starring the first six chapters so if you started on the viper mission and started five starring all everything all the way through to here with juggernaut and you five star all of them that will give you more than what you need for the 177 task after that just you could just get one a mission and all the way up here to 12, and you will have your full roster unlocked of general releases. You don't have to do it that way. I'm not saying you do. I'm just saying if you're the type of person that wants to grind in the easiest possible content, 
that is the way to do it. But I mean, any mix of five stars here for Hammerhead, five stars here for Vulture, but maybe you really, really hate this one. You hate Bullseye. You're going to get two stars there and maybe you can five star Hood, five star Magneto. However you want to do it, it's fine. But do know a lot of recruitment is hidden uh, above chapter five, usually in mission four or five in uh, any one of these chapters up here. And then some do come from uh, fulfilling the mega tasks like this one here with Dormammu. All right, guys, I hope that is information that is handy for you when beta six drops. Hopefully, maybe you've got a planned team that you know is easily accessible to you and you can start playing uh, and hitting the ground running. Again, um, my job in this video is to caution you in terms of thinking, oh, I can't wait to recruit here. Spec Ops is, is what I'm missing. You know, I've played 5.2 for a while. I've played the story mission to death. I've played these characters to death. I've unlocked them all. They're all 10, they're all 13, whatever. I want new, 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 new. Calm yourself down, chill out a little bit, and be prepared to properly do the story content before you start going for the Spec Ops bosses, obviously outside of Mockingbird. And also, you need to be successful in PvP seasons to get all of the, excuse me, PvAI seasons in order to get all of the PvAI characters unlocked for the later Spec Opses. But if you want to go into a Spec Ops to get a piece of gear and then use that to your advantage to go through the story content even faster, by all means, go ahead and do so. I just wanted to give you guys that information for proper planning. When all of Season 1 becomes available to you, 11 Spec Ops come available to you, and 9 or 10 PvAI Seasons, I think it might just be... Nine. I think it ends with Angel. Yes. Yeah, it, it does end with Angel over there. Tell you, I, I mean, I know Deep Power took a little bit of a nerf. I am looking forward to Spiral. I don't give a shit about Domino. I know Agent Venom has his fans. I'm not that crazy about him. Uh, Hogan. Yeah, I cannot wait to get a PvP season, PvAI season where I can get Hogan because this dude is a monster. So is Rocket, Drax, Karnak, meh, Nova, meh, Angel, meh, Vic, meh, Deathlock, meh, and Spider-Man Noir, of course, is good. So anyway, that's where we stand now. Hope I hope this advice helps you go through Beta 6 in a way that you find enjoyable without getting frustrated. Thanks a lot, everybody. I will see you guys later.